Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Codigen G60 12 G1 MIDI tower. So for the last 10 years I've been using laptops like this one and over the time I had some issues with reliability and upgradability. For example on this laptop like two years ago um, the main board just died out of nowhere and exactly uh, two years after I bought it. So it was like a week out of warranty and the main board broke. So that was extremely annoying. And most of the times you can't find new parts for laptops. So you have to use like scavenged old ones. And there can be issues with that also. For example, on this main board, six months after I switched it, um, the ethernet port died and I didn't bother to fix it because the Wi-Fi still works and it does the job. And that's why I wanted to go back to the old standard PC. And I wanted to build one myself. Again, I only bought like the first PC I owned and everything else after that I built myself. And I was looking at cases and for a decent one you have to spend like at least 50 euros, which is um, a little bit too much for my taste. So I also was looking at used cases. They start at around 30 euros, but there can be issues with that also. You can have, um, some of them had scratches, some of them had missing parts, some of them were already modified, like new drilled holes for bigger fans or something cut out. And I really didn't want to deal with that. So I was looking at new PC cases. And so I found this uh, Codigen G60 12 G1 MIDI tower. And the main reason I bought it was the price. Including shipment, it was only 13 euro 90, which is less than half of what I would have paid for a used one. So let's take a closer look. The first thing I like about this MIDI tower is the design. It is simple and quiet, almost elegant. Um, I don't need anything fancy. It's gonna spend much of its time just under a desk and there's really no reason spending big bucks on something nobody is ever gonna see. So the next thing uh, the buttons, the, the power button is big enough and doesn't stick and feels decent and works fine. You can also get to the reset button without any problems. So the buttons feel quite decent. I don't suspect there'll be any issues with that. The next thing I've noticed about the build construction are the rivets in the back. Some of them aren't quite seated fully, like, I don't know if you can see that one. This is normal, that's how it's supposed to be. And like this one, it's crooked, it stands off a bit. As you can see, it stands off a bit, not much, but you can get a fingernail down there. Yeah, I don't think that's an, really an issue, it's just, doesn't look right, just doesn't look nice, but that's it. I'm pretty sure this won't open or yeah, it's just a cosmetic issue. I'm sure it will work fine. Just something I noticed. The next thing, the case has metal feet. Sometimes they are out of rubber, but this one has metal feet, it, it's not an issue. You just have to be aware of that if you have like some really valuable floor, like some exotic wood or some marble stone or something. If you slide it across it, you probably leave some marks. So have that in mind. So next up, let's take a look inside. There's a screw up here. So there is a packet with screws and the buzzer. Let's open it up. Let's see what's inside there. Yeah, the buzzer and a screw kit for fans, for drives, for the main board. Yeah, I'm gonna need that later.
So what I'm also noticing is that some parts uh, appear to be zinc plated like this because you can see and you can smell it on your hand and some parts like this the back plate for the mainboard and the outer casing appear to be just printed gray so I am not sure yeah I can see some this is definitely just printed on so it's most definitely not the most rigid construction the back plate flexes a bit as you can see and all in all yeah it's not it's not really that bad but you can feel it and it's okay i don't think there'll be an issue with that but yeah it just feels a little bit wonky so the next thing is there are some sharp corners in here so you have to watch out for your fingers like there is a burr on this piece and some of the edges are quite sharp so you have to watch out for that and don't cut yourself some are rounded off like this but there are a few sharp edges in here so watch out for that yeah definitely so if you shake this th the thing besides the cables there's nothing vibrating in the hair so i don't think it will be uh, a contribution to a noise problem when you run that and the other thing is as i showed you before some of the rivets aren't completely seated but if you look in the back the metal part is fully flush up against the the mount so yeah the the rivets look crooked but they do the job it's completely attached and there's no play in it there is a latch up here where you can mount a lock so nobody can get in in the computer so or like a tamper proofing device or something like that so you know nobody can open the case without you so another feature is it has two usb ports up front you don't have to get to the back if you need some usb access so that's a plus yeah but i don't see any audio no there are no headphone jacks so yeah you have to use an extension cable or something like that for that but it's great it has usb up front and that's really all i need so next up i'm gonna be installing my hardware in here and i don't want to go into any details on how to do that there are already enough tutorials on youtube so go watch some of them i'm just gonna smash my hardware in there and see what's what i'm gonna be using this msi z97s crate edition mainboard with a intel xeon e3 1231 mark III processor it's not the most powerful one but it has a great bang for your buck and also crucial ballistics sport 16 gigabyte ram i also gonna be installing this be quiet system power 8 600 watt power supply it offers great specs and it isn't that expensive and best of all you have two pci power cables so you can install two graphic cards i'm gonna be using an intenso 240 gigabyte ssd i still have this old radeon hd 7970 graphics card lying around i'm gonna be utilizing it in this system it's not the most powerful anymore but it it will do the job it so now i'm gonna smash it all in and talk to you later about how it went and what's my verdict on this case
So now that I have installed all the components in the case, I'm gonna power it up and see if it works. Or if it did a mistake and some magic smoke comes out. Power and let's push the button. Yay, it lives. Let's see. The fans are turning and it powered on. Let's see if the operating system boots because I this SSD already has a Linux Ubuntu on it and it should power up just without any hiccups. Oh no, it's Linux Mint. I forgot. <laughs> So yeah, it looks like it's working and there were no issues with the case uh, during install. The only thing I've noted is if, if you have like a long graphic card, it, it gets a little bit narrow up in here. There's only like half a centimeter room to play, but you, you can get the graphics card without any issues. And so what's my verdict on this case? It's actually quite good. I'm very satisfied with it. It's, it does the job. It, uh, there's nothing major wrong with it. Uh, the install went smoothly and so I'm quite satisfied and I can recommend this case to anybody who is looking for a cheap MIDI tower. There is nothing wrong with it. You can use it. It's worth the price. Mm, I do give it a thumbs up. If you like this video and you'd like to support the channel, please uh, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and that's it for the review of this codegen g60 12 g1 midi tower i'm gonna close it up now that's it so see you guys later